So let's go to transportation. We started with we started with you, um, uh, Representative Mahoney. Uh, you wanted to talk about roads and bridges, so let's do that and sort of the general transportation dollars that will be appropriated this year and where you think that should go. Then we're going to go back to a DNR question, but let's go transportation first. Well, transportation, uh, it should be evenly divided amongst the state. There's needs out in your district and your district and your district and my district. Mm -hmm. We have to figure that piece out because you've got, I've got the Third Street Bridge. It's a $35 million. Closer uh, to 50, isn't it? I, I, I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is not in my district, but it's in my neck of the woods. Um, so where do we get the money? Uh, you know, roads and we've done bridges through the bonding bill uh, quite often. Uh, what other piece out of that bonding bill do we do transportation? Well, we do we do roads and bridges, isn't it? A few of them, um, but I'm if somebody could put up a gas tax, I'll vote for it. But mm -hmm. you know, I'm tired of driving on potholed roads. Um, but we also need to have a transit piece to it too, because in my part of the town, in my city, it's just getting too crowded to drive. And that's, we're not going to get a gas tax that can fix your roads until we get a gas tax that helps do mass transit in, in the metro area. And it's just, it's unfortunate. That's a piece where uh, my friend, the senator, was talking about how hard it is to make things work up there, how, how um, people are getting stuck in... So what's an easy word that doesn't get me in trouble? <laughs> you know, oh, sorry, get, get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right in. <laughs> I do a pretty good job. I've done a lot of help. But, um, so that's a piece that's going to be a problem. How do we pay for it? And it's back to the infrastructure. Uh, we don't want to have another bridge collapse. But we also don't want to have a bridge declared unsafe during harvest time when everybody's trying, the farmers are trying to make their money. That's because if you can't get across a bridge and you've got to go another 50 miles, your harvest is a lot harder, a lot harder. And the manufacturers up in your neck of the woods, if they can't go across one of those bridges or the, the freeway doesn't hold up during the spring, thaw, uh, they can't get their product to market. If I can't get people to downtown or to uh, greater uh, the greater suburban area where most of the manufacturing jobs are here, they can't get a job. So anyhow, I could go on, but I'll leave it at that. Senator Eakin, transportation. Sure. Well, I think there's going to have to be a compromise. Uh, and uh, I, I think that compromise has to include some gas tax user fee revenue as well, um, because that's the, that's the source of revenue that really works best for the rural areas, because we it runs through a formula where we get back more than what we pay. Yes, in. you do. <laughs> uh, and so we, we do get subsidies, I guess you could call it, or subsidized by the metro area that goes into roads and bridges. It's all dedicated, so it only goes to roads and bridges. And that's the best deal for us is to get, uh, and I call it a gas tax user fee for the reason that it is completely dedicated. Uh, so it is uh, really a user fee, and uh, which again is constitutionally dedicated. Uh, if we don't get revenue in that way, uh, what that really means, the alternative is increased property taxes, and the full burden falls on the rural residents, and they pay much more. Jeez, I'm going to have and to so, rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I'm saying that has to be a piece of it, but it does have to be compromised, but I, I think that needs to be a part yeah. of it. Uh, one other thing to remember about the, the gas tax user fee is that in, it, it doesn't apply to farm fuel, and that is the biggest part of our economy in, in my district. Yeah. Uh, so that's exempt from the, the gas tax user fee. So it's a, you know, it's in general, it's better for rural areas. We get back more than what we pay in, but especially in those areas that, that are heavily agricultural, like my own. Senator Ruth. One of the things that worries me about about the gas tax, I, I just went, met with one of our commissioners, and their big, um, I asked them what their one of their goals and one of the of the that they would like to accomplish, and they want to put um, charging stations for electric cars all over and for rapid chargers and solar chargers and so we do a gas tax and we don't capture any of those electric cars because they are not using gas and so I, I really um, I, I think maybe a better solution about how we capture 
all the cars because um, really it's not fair for them to use the roads and the bridges and the transportation and never pay any tax on that. So somehow we have to capture, um, if we are truly going to go through the Teslas and the electric cars and that be a focus for us, somehow that formula has to include them. Um, and so I don't know how how that works. Um, I'm not a really big fan of the gas tax because I don't think it captures all the users, especially the new users. So. Um, I think there's a lot of creative ideas out there that we need to use. Um, I just met with the Transportation Alliance yesterday, and I think everybody's really focused on having a good transportation package. What that looks like at the end of the day, I don't know, but we all know that we need to um, bond. Uh, that, that's a great way to do our infrastructure, although in greater Minnesota that's not the best uh, uh, way to do it. but. Um, I think we'll have a really, you're right, we need a good, comprehensive, and there's going to be, have to be some compromise all the way around in order to get that done. Well, first of all, um, going a little bit more with what Senator Rood was saying, I, I don't think that uh, the gas tax is a reliable source of, uh, of energy into the future. I mean, we, we need to look at other things. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as we have more uh, fuel efficient cars, less reliance on gasoline, uh, we, we, you know, for now, the gas tax is fine, but we need to look to find something better as we go into the future. Um, we've we've done some things with putting, uh, you know, capturing the, the sales tax on auto parts and things like that. Uh, at least gave us a little bit of boost. Uh, in the uh, the last uh, biennium, uh, in the transportation bill, uh, there were some changes made to do more for our local bridges. Uh, the uh, bonding bill, uh, also some of the larger bridges, what we're looking at uh, at this point. But uh, between the two of us, in the last uh, couple of years where we did do two bonding bills, uh, between transportation and uh, uh, bonding, we, I think, set a record on local roads and bridge spending. And we did do an awful lot uh, for our local roads and bridges. Uh, there's more to do, and uh, we have to find, uh, I think, some more cost-efficient ways to do it in terms of how do we raise all of this money, uh, but that's uh, the big challenge is before us. Let me push you a little bit on the on the alternatives to the gas tax. On the panel last week, or perhaps it was the week before, but I think it was last week, we had some discussion about some experiments that have been conducted, I think, in Oregon and Washington with uh, keeping track of mileage uh, and using per mileage charges and things of that sort. They've run into privacy concerns, uh, government knowing where vehicles are being driven and things of that sort, um, have not become widespread. Um, do you have any alternatives in mind that uh, to, to the gas tax that might be developing over the next uh, decade or so? Well, one of the concerns about the mileage tax that you're talking about, I, I think it uh, penalizes in some ways greater Minnesota more because uh, for folks that I have that maybe drive in from Cocado, they're spending an hour on the road, and you may be having people going from you know Bloomington to I don't know a northern suburb, and they're spending an hour as well, and you know the cars Probably are running. nine miles or ten yeah, miles. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more longer, bigger, <laughs> but, greater distance than ten miles. But, but maybe the same amount of time in the car, but you know. Our folks in Greater Minnesota are paying more. I, I don't want to see that. Uh, you know, we're going to have to get creative. There have to be uh, better ways to do this besides just relying on the on the gas tax. And uh, you know, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, that we come up with something in the near future. Yeah, and if I could, I, I sure. agree with Representative Erdahl and Senator Rood about you know we need to be looking at alternatives as well because. Uh, Electric cars are going to become a very big part of the transportation system, and, and uh, obviously the, the gas tax user fee doesn't address that. But right now, the gas tax user fee is an extremely big part of our transportation funding, and I'm just saying it should be a part of uh, any solution to the transportation problems that we're having. And all of us agree around this table and in the legislature, Democrat, Republican, rural, metro, that we need significantly more funding for our roads and bridges. The only question is how to do it. And uh, again, I think it's going to require a compromise. We do have a divided legislature, <laughs> obviously, the only one in the nation, actually, yes. right now. That well, and, and to Senator Rood's, uh the electric cars, they do pay a surcharge when they buy their license. 
which gets them up to, uh, we have very, very few pure electric cars. We have mostly hybrids. Mm -hmm. And they pay a, a, a surcharge when they get their license plates. That makes up for that lack of, my wife has You know Prius. the amount, I thought it was not very much. You know I think it it's 80 or $90 a, a, a year. Um, and my wife's Prius gets, I don't know, 35, 50 miles a gallon. And so she has to pay that and, and then her gas. So, um, yeah, we have to be a bit innovative. Uh, and we're going to get to driverless cars at some point, and then they will, they will just charge the miles. You know, I, I think it's interesting when you, I'm not a fan of, of keeping track of people's mileage and, and, and that way, and, but when we talk about uh, data privacy issues, I always think it's kind of funny because uh, today in the garage when I was leaving, one of our senators said, do you believe this? My dealership just texted me saying, the windshield wiper fluid in your car is low, you better check it out. Now. She's in the garage, <laughs> garage in the Senate building, and the dealership knows that her windshield wiper fluid is low and sends her a text. So uh, the fact that we're worried about who has our data, I think everybody has our data. Well, that's, that, that, of course, that's, <laughs> this is the responsive argument to that, is you could quit worrying about privacy because there isn't any. Yeah. So, so I, very, very I have no position on this, but I think we're going to be having some discussion about these issues in the years I, ahead. I believe so.